In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, pray for us now and at the hour of our Amen. Our Lady, seat of wisdom. Tomorrow in Australia, can we just turn down the mic a bit? Tomorrow in Australia, we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. Epiphany, as you all know, is the time we celebrate liturgically the, the coming of the Magi, or the wise men, or sometimes are known as the, as the three kings. Men who had come from afar to see this long-awaited person. Now, they weren't Jews. They weren't men who were brought up in the Jewish tradition. They didn't come, they weren't sons of Abraham. But they were, Magi were men who, um, who looked into books of wisdom, both from the Jewish tradition and from other traditions as well. And through their searching for wisdom and for truth, that's how they found Christ. In their searching, they had come to understand the signs in the sky. Now we hear, we know about astronomy, where we study the constellations, and of course there's the astrology, which we need to keep uh, steer clear of. Um, theirs wasn't really an astrology, it's much more of an astronomy, but they knew that when this particular star appeared, then that meant that the chosen one, the one who had come to change the world, and they probably didn't have, maybe have a full understanding of what that meant, but they knew that he was someone worthy of these great gifts. They had some, we know by the, the very gifts that they gave that he had some understanding of his identity, but we'll save that for the epiphany homily itself later on this evening. As you know, they followed the star. Different, uh, different traditions have them coming from different places or from the same place, these three kings. Um, um, their names just escape me. Isn't Balthazar, Melchior, and Caspar. Thank you. And it begins with K. These three men, whose bodies are now or remains, not so much the bodies, are found in Cologne, in Germany. They followed a star, <clears throat> and when they finally followed it to its end, you can imagine the star clearly was moving. Otherwise, you know, if we just follow a star, we'll just keep going in one direction or in circles, depending which star. They found Christ. They found him who was to be the savior of the world, who was the savior of the world. He who came to redeem all men. He would, who would not only uh, be him, be not only be the one who shed his blood so that we might have life, but he might, even, he might, he would be the one who would give himself as our food, so that we might also have the strength to get on the cross ourselves and give life to others. Where did they find him? They found him in the, mo in the first monstrance, on the first throne. You know, we have the, uh, the monstrance here on a, what we call a throne, a Eucharistic throne. The lap of Our Lady was the first throne of the Eucharist, of our Lord. Her very body was already a monstrance when our Lord was conceived within her. And so when they went to seek Jesus, they necessarily found Mary. And when we go to Mary, we necessarily find a Jesus. There is a, as the saying goes, there are a job lot. They go together. There's no separating them. No matter how much we try to separate them, this son will not be separated from his mother. And no matter how much we go to seek Jesus and not want to find Our Lady, she will always be there. Not because she's trying to push her way in, but because she will not let anything separate her from her son. And all she wants, that we need to remember this, all she wants is for us to meet him, to know him, to adore him, and to present our gifts to him as the Magi did. Now we may not have very much gold to present, we may not have any frankincense. We may not even know what myrrh is. But what Christ wants is nothing exotic. He wants 
everything. He wants the little we have or all, all that we have. That's what He wants. He doesn't want it to take it away from us, but He wants it to be sanctified in Him. To be used for His glory. And His glory is always to our benefit for our eternal salvation and our sanctification. We never lose by giving. These three magi, again, who were not, were not even Jews, and yet they gave these gifts of great price. They traveled very likely thousands of miles. We often see them on camels. I've never ridden a camel. I can't imagine it's that comfortable. All that way through inhosp inhospitable lands to find this person that wasn't even part of their culture or religion, but they sought the truth and they found him like every man who has every, ever sought the truth will find it. It almost reminds me, for those who know the history of um, the church in Korea, Korea is the only country on earth where they found Christianity without missionaries going there. Men who sought the truth and they found it in the Catholic church and they went out to find missionaries to bring them back. The same spirit, I think, as the Magi. They sought the truth and they found it. Even in, in, in some of their, um, you know, as uh, the church teaches, the, there's a glimpse of truth in all, in all religions, except the fullness of truth we find in the Catholic faith. And through that glimpse of truth, because Christ wants so much that all men would come to know the truth, he draw, drew them, he drew these three men to him there in Bethlehem. They didn't disdain the fact that he was in a, in a manger either. But he, they saw through all those externals for who he truly was. You can imagine these three wise men who were probably wealthy, had some kind of nobility, and they go into a, into a barn, if, if indeed that's where they met Christ, to kneel before this baby. They didn't disdain it at all because they knew better. They accepted the grace of God to see things for how they really were. And the way that they saw it so clearly was also through, of course, his mother. She was there holding him, uh, de not demonstrating, I can't think of the word in, in English for some reason, my brain's gone to Italian mode, <laughs> mostrare. The, she was um, showing him off, if you will. Um, we have exposition, exposing him, for lack of a better word, in English to the world and in her arms and on her lap they discovered Christ they discovered the Eucharist in its fullest meaning both as our strength and our food but as a moment of thanksgiving and we can be sure that they would have been missionaries back in their own land as well we don't have any um, uh, clear idea of what happened when they went back there were, there were a few customs and traditions uh, but we know that they, would, they changed their lives and if you were there were pre-evangelists for the missions, missionaries that would follow them. We are called, therefore, to follow their example. First and foremost, all of us are called to continually seek the truth. Now, we are all, I'm assuming most of us here are Catholics, if not all of us. We have the truth, we're Catholics, we go to church on Sunday. la di la di dan but do we continue to seek it? Just imagine for those of you who are married. Um, when you marry somebody, you, you know them. Hopefully you have some idea who they are. <laughs> but you know that after a few years, you realize that you didn't know them much at all at the first. And <laughs> I don't want to start any arguments here. Um, and as the time goes on, you come to know them more. But you realize that you need to learn about them more. You need to come to know them more. You need to seek out who they truly are, and them, you as well, so that you may come to love each other more. Now again, the thing is, is that when we come to know, when you're married, you kind of have an obligation to try to love no matter what, in that sense, well, in all our relationships. Unfortunately, sometimes when we come to know other people, the more we come to know them, the harder it is to love them. But with Christ, that's never the case. And so just like these wise men who went to seek him, the more they came to know him, the more they longed for him until they traversed those thousands of miles, until they made those sacrifices of those expensive and precious gifts, until they humbled themselves 
humiliated themselves even to bow before a child and a poor Hebrew woman in a barn because they saw him and knew him. We are called, therefore, to continue to come to know Christ. Do not be satisfied with your knowledge of him. It's not enough. How can it be enough? God is infinite. That's what heaven will be for it be as well. If you're wondering what you're going to do in heaven, you'll be continually learning of who God is. Never ending, never stopping. Every moment we'll discover a new facet to love, a new amazing thing about him. Every single moment for all eternity. And so we're supposed to begin that now. So that the desire to meet him will increase. Despite the trials and difficulties that it may take us. That it may cost us. The, the deserts that we may have to also travel through as the Magi did. But we know that the, we have an advantage that the Magi did not have. On our journey we have the Blessed Virgin already with us. Christ is with us too, of course. But she is holding our hands. She is leading the way. She is our star that will show us to the stable where we may adore Christ. She will make us a stable, if you will, where Christ can reside, where we can adore him in spirit and therefore adore him more uh, effectively, worthily, knowingly and lovingly here on the altar in the Blessed Sacrament. This is what we are called to do. We can't be, as the great St. John Paul II said more than once, do not be satisfied with mediocrity. Do not be satisfied with your relationship with our Lord. Just as I hope in your own human relationships, especially those really important ones like your marriages and with your children and with your parents, you're not satisfied to let things lie. Sometimes it happens, unfortunately, but we should never be. We know they are important. So also with your relationship with God, keep building it. Keep seeking it. Keep asking Him. Because He'll be the one that, that, that gives you the, the tools and the strength and the courage. Most especially through Himself in the Blessed Sacrament. In the Sacrament of Holy Communion, in the Eucharist. That is where we find our strength to love Him and to know Him. You know, and it, it, there, there is an analogy in human love as well. Especially in marriage. Because in marriage, how it's supposed to be is the husband gives himself to the wife and the wife gives herself to the husband and then giving to them each other to giving themselves to each other is how they learn have, have the strength to love each other and so Christ gives himself to us so that we may have the strength to love him he doesn't need our strength clearly but in in the reciprocal act of love we offer ourselves completely to him also let us not be afraid therefore let us cling hold of him let us cling tight to him rather let us approach the Eucharist with uh, confidence. If, uh, if we need to go to confession first, please do that. There's at least three priests, soon to be four out there hearing confessions if you need to. So that we might also traverse whatever deserts are put before us. We might sacrifice whatever we must so that we may give a gift to Christ worthy of his dignity, worthy of his divinity and as much as we can as human persons. Let us go to Our Lady that if we don't have much to give, that she may make up for that. You know, somebody once said that when we have little to give or it's not perfect, we give it to Our Lady and she'll make it immaculate. She'll clean it up. Just like a good mum will do when, you, you know, when you're first le learning how to tie a tie for those who had to go to pri went to private school. You know, it's all back to front and upside down. Mum will come along and, well, it was for me, it was my dad, but um, nevertheless, um, you know, she'll tidy you up. She'll make you look presentable. This is what Our Lady does for us with Christ. Don't be afraid, therefore, we have the most perfect mother. Again, remember, St. Maximilian says, she is all mercy. Yes, you know, there might be that holy fear of God, which we must have, where we fear the judgment of God, but we rely on his mercy. But Mary doesn't have to judge us, and so she will not. She is just mercy. Let us go to her so that she might bring us to her son, who all he wants is for us to be with him. All he wants is us for us to love his mother as he did. And all she wants is us for us to be with him now in this earth, to love him and have peace, excuse me, to have the peace and joy that he offers, but most importantly, to be with him for eternity in heaven, where we might glorify him, we might love him more and more every moment, and we might bring the maximum amount of souls with us to that eternal salvation.